people, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Welcome to another fun little 10 album one. So the other day I put up a video called 10 albums with the best opening song. And so today we're doing 10 albums with the best closing song. Um, I tried so hard to find 10 albums in my poxy little collection that I could talk about. I tried to not do any double ups or anything like that, but unfortunately I could only find nine strong contenders. So I've gone and doubled up. So um, we'll get those out of the way first. But before we do, let me know down below which albums immediately come to mind when you hear the words best album with the closing with a, with a, with a closing track is the best song on the album. So yeah, I had to really stick to my gut and be, and be honest with myself and say, no, the actual best song on that album is this song. So yeah, which albums come to mind when I mention those words? Let me know down below and we'll get the conversation started. But yeah, it's just a top 10. It's a, it's a random list. It's not a ranking. It's not an alphabetical order. It's just as they came to my brain. So without further ado, I reckon we'll just get straight into it coming in at number 10. So the first one that I'm talking about today is Ailstorm's fifth album, No Grave But The Sea. Fantastic album, my favourite Ailstorm album of all time. But yes, the closing track on this album is a track called Treasure Island, and it is by far not the best song on this album. It's one of the best songs in their entire catalogue. It's up there with 1741 and Captain Morgan's Revenge. Honestly, if you haven't heard Treasure Island, it's an absolute epic song. Immediately, that sets the trend for this entire video. I love epic closing songs. Obviously, my favorite band is Maiden. So yeah, expect a lot of, you, there's a lot of title tracks in this as well, but it's all good. We'll, we'll get through that when we do. Um, so yeah, Treasure Island, it's this big eight minute album closing song is epic, powerful, f just just awesome. You know, Treasure Island is an epic story in itself, so it had to be an epic song. And I, like I said, if you haven't heard it, I would highly recommend you go check it out. It's This album is fantastic. It's that perfect blend, I think, between silly pirates and epic metal pirates. You know, it's that absolute perfect blend. But yeah, No Grave, Mexico, To the End of the World, Ailstorm and Bardo and Imbis, or what I can say. So that's a great side. And then side B is full of like the filler silly songs, but at the same time, those filler silly songs are actually amazing as well. It's with an anchor, Peg Leg Potion, that's great. Man the Pumps is awesome. Rage of the Pentahook, that's just great stuff. But yeah, Treasure Island is easily the best song in this album. So yeah, number one, um, Ailstorm's No Grave But The Sea, Treasure Island. Number two, we go back to the origins of black metal slash Viking metal, very borderline. I think the next album was the first full-blown Viking metal. So we tackle Bathory's title track and closing track, Blood, Fire, Death. Oh man, oh excuse me. I remember when I first heard that song, um, when I was getting into the roots of black metal, I remember it being very like, whoa. Again, a bit like Treasure Island, this is an epic closing song. It's a 10 and a half minute, just absolute onslaught of all things Bathory. It's that perfect blend between the black metal stuff, which I listen to mostly for when I'm listening to Bathory. I don't really tend to go too hard into the Viking stuff. I ranked all of Battery and Bathory and this album got very, very high. It's not number one though. Um, but yeah, um, it starts off with this beautiful clean intro before the pounding drums and guitars kick in and Cawthon's vocals just soar through it. The chorus in it is great. The lyrics are insane. And then of course there's that epic gallop section at the end. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's a bit basic, but God damn, is it heavy. The rest of this album is of, again, flawless. You can't, you can't knock it. Odin's ride over Nordland, a fine day to die, absolutely perfect. The golden age, the golden walls of heaven, you know, pace till death and Holocaust. Holocaust is a great song. That one's just epic. That awesome ending, Holocaust, you know, it's just like, wow. But yeah, for all those who died in disarray and yeah, just blood fire death is easily the standout for this album. I understand why it's a title track, but yeah, an epic closing album, or epic closing track nonetheless, Bathory, blood fire death. The next song, the next album is, I think, the first black metal album, full black metal album that I ever owned. Immortals, Northern Chaos Gods from 2018. And I'm talking about the epic closing track, Mighty Raven Dark. Again, epic closing track. You can't knock these, these, the, oh, I just love epic tracks. So, if you haven't heard Immortal, um, get into it. Because if you want to get into black metal, I would highly recommend you start with these guys. They're what I call the blend between power and black. Do you know what I mean? They sing about fantasy, icy, cold lands whilst sounding like black metal. However, the production is a massive step up from normal Dark Throne, Transylvania Hunger black metal. But yeah, this album, I don't know why I bought it. Probably because I heard Mighty Raven Dark and was just like, oh, 
get it. This was right at the start of my vinyl collecting habit. So yeah, um, it's a fantastic album. It's one of my favorite Immortal albums because it's one of the first ones I've ever heard. Northern Chaos Gods, just, it's an onslaught of an album and it's an onslaught of an opening song too. Into Battle Ride, great stuff. Great, Gates to Blusher, awesome. Grim and Dark, that one's amazing. But yeah, Call to Ice, Where Mountains Rise, which is pretty much a black metal where eagles there. Blacker of Worlds and yeah, Mighty Raven Dark, a big 10 minute just, uh, you can move mountains listening to that song, I swear to God. So yeah, if you haven't heard this one, I highly recommend you go. I'm surprised it wasn't the title track, Mighty Raven Dark, but hey, it is what it is. Immortal, Northern Chaos Gods, Mighty Raven Dark. Bit progressive now, Dream Theater, Octavarium. Again, another title track, but you can't deny it's a closing track and it is by far the best song on this album. Again, that's one of the best songs from their entire catalog. Um, oh, God damn, where to start with this song? 24 minutes, progressive metal, it's Dream Theater. It's Dream Theater at their best, in my opinion. This is easily the best Dream Theater album, in my opinion. Um, eight songs, 75 odd minutes or whatever it is, 70 minutes, over 75 minutes of just pure dream theater not you could say at their fullest it is quite a stripped back album in terms of like how chaotic and stuff they are and on other albums but this album from start to finish is just perfect the root of all evil the answer lies within these walls just good stuff i walk beside you panic attack that's just that bass intro is awesome never enough sacred sons sacrificed sons and yeah just the 24 minute octavarium just absolutely perfect starting with that synthy steel guitar sound and then going into part one racing all the way through to part five just full circle just everything coming together ending as it begins and just fantastic if you haven't heard octavarium ah just do yourself a favor take some time off and listen to the song not the album just the song and you'll get a you'll get half a gist of what I'm talking about. It's an amazing album, it's an amazing song, and I can't recommend that one enough. So yeah, Dream Theater's Octavarium. Next up, we've gone for a Metallica album, and I was humming and hiring, you know, to go over the classics one, but like I say, I had to stay honest and true. So I was like, well, it's not Puppets to me because Disposable is the best song on that album. It's not Kill 'Em All because I think the best song on there is probably The Four Horsemen. Uh, it's not Ride the Lightning because the best song on there is Creeping Death. So I've gone for Metallica's Spit Out the Bone Off Hardwired. This one is just a massive box, um, and that for a 21st century um, Metallica album, this one's pretty awesome. Like, you come on, it's I think it's a lot better than 72, and it's is it better than Death Magnetic? I don't know. I haven't really had lots lots to do with Death Magnetic in terms of like growing up or whatnot. But my partner loves this album. She thrashes yeah. it so much. Yeah, and yeah. Like, every song on here is pretty much a hit, minus like two or three. You could probably take off Murder One, unfortunately, the Lemmy tribute, and possibly Here Comes Revenge, you know. Those two are probably my least favorite, but literally everything else on here is just great. Hardwired, Atlas, Now That We're Dead, Moth Into Flame, Am I Savage, Halo On Fire, um, Confusion, Dream No More, Man Unkind, yeah. Just spit out the bone is just this real, back to, I would say back to roots, but just something aggressive that the fans needed to hear after such a long time. Do you know what I mean? The heaviest thing, Death Magnetic was heavy, but it was just like, it wasn't kill them all heavily, hit fast. Do you know what I mean? It was just like, okay, but you hear spit out the bone and you hear those drums and the riffs and the vocals and the solo and the bass figure in the middle. It's just, it's just fantastic, man. Like a great way to end the album, just to really kind of to tell the fans hey we can still be thrashy do you know what i mean it's a fantastic album and um if you're one of these fans who can't go past the black album just do it you know listen to load and reload but definitely listen to this one honestly it's so good so yeah spit out the bone from metallica's hardwired to self-destruct so coming up next is one that i a band that i recently ranked it was my last um ranking episode and i actually put this album quite low to the bottom i put it like second to last but that's not to mean that it's a bad album it's just you know there are others just better in their catalog however the ending song to this album is amazing nightwish's wishmaster from 2000 the ending song to this album is a song called phantasmic and my god it's awesome like again it's an epic song of course it's epic it's a nightwish song um but like it's just so damn good compared to the rest of the album. Like, there are songs on here that are great. Like, the opening song, She Is My Sing, The Kinslayer, The Kingslayer, sorry. And Wonderlust is awesome. But yeah, Wishmaster, the title track, a two, is great. But what it is all worth is fantastic at the end. It's like eight, nine, seven, seven, eight, nine minute song that's inspired purely from Disney movies and fairy tales and stuff like that. They, they sing about, you know, they show reference to like Peter Pan and um, Beauty and the Beast and all that other stuff, which for me 
is what I love. <laughs> I won't lie. I love Disney movies, old Disney films, by the way. Um, but yeah, it's just awesome. The, the the modulations in that I think are just perfect. The way they change keys throughout the thing, and I'll just I just think it all sounds so nice. If you haven't heard that song, if you only if you've only heard like the Wishmaster title track, and um, I won't blame you if you do, because that's where I first heard Talia. I think it's a great song, fantastic. Go listen to it. You won't be disappointed, especially if you like Disney films. So yeah, fantastic off Wishmaster. Coming up next is my favourite band of all time, Iron Maiden. You could easily go with some 80s classics in terms of closing tracks. You've got Ancient Mariner, you've got Alexander the Great, you've got Fear of the Dark. But I was like, do you know what, let's show a little homage to the later Maiden. Do you know what I mean? This album, again, a bit like Wishmasters, this is not their best work, in my opinion. It was the first brand new Maiden album to come out when I started listening to them. So it is a little bit special, but at the same time, it's not one that I go back to all the time. However... If you've been noticing the trend, the closing epic 10, 11 minute um, closing track, When the Wild Wind Blows, is, in my opinion, one of Maiden's best songs. I'm currently ranking all of Iron Maiden's songs at the moment in little increment videos, and that song will definitely be appearing in the last one. I'll just say that much. But yeah, Wild Wind Blows is an, is a, is an 11 minute song about pretty much the end of the world. This was written, this was this came out in 2010, so I imagine that was inspired by the hype of the, the end of the Mayan calendar. Do you remember that? 20, December 21st, 2020, 2012, do you remember that? So I imagine that's what that was inspired by. But yeah, um, the rest of the album isn't that good. Like it's it's okay, but like I like I said, I don't listen to it very often. The other like yeah, but the melodies in When the Wild Wind Blows, the harmonies that they do. When I was hearing it for the first time, I was just blown away. I listened to that song so much when I first heard it, and I was just like, good God. And to this day, I still listen to that song so much. It's it's so good. Whenever it comes on my shuffle and I see the see the song and I hear the wind, I'm just like, oh chills. Here we go. Do you know what I mean? It's a fantastic song. Go listen to it. Don't knock it just because it's 21st century. But yeah, um, Iron Man's Final Frontier, When the Wild Wind Blows. Great closing song. And naturally, of course, the one album, the one band that I had to double up would be Maiden because I don't have 10 albums without repeating them. So this one, again, I'm going to show homage to later Maiden. I'm talking about the last album, Senjutsu. Um, it could be a matter of life and death, but in my opinion, the legacy is not the best song in the album, so it couldn't have been that one. And um, yeah. The, what's, the Thin Line Between Love and Hate isn't my favourite off Brave New World either. So it had to be this one. Um, Hell on Earth. Good God. That beauty, that beautiful, beautiful song. Just like When the Wild Wind Blows. That sounded a bit Trump, didn't it? It was a beautiful song. It was a beautiful song. The best song I've ever heard in all my life. You know, um, that song, Hell on Earth, just fantastic. It, pretty much the same story as When the Wild Wind Blows. When I heard the melody, I was just like, what is that? You know, just real haunting. Yes, it's long. It's 11 minutes. But that's why uh, that's why we listen to Maiden. That's why we listen to 21st Century Maiden. You know, we buy triple LPs and have one song on one side. There's no need for that. But still, it's just great. I saw that song live and it nearly killed me. Um, I Yeah, I just, if you haven't heard Hell on Earth by Maiden, please go listen to it. Sit down and really just take it in. It's honestly such an amazing song. You won't be disappointed at all um yeah it's a great way to close the album and honestly if maiden retired like right now i'd be fine with hell on earth being the last song that they created it's that good if you haven't heard it just go do it hell on earth senjutsu maiden Next up, we're going to go into some power metal. So um, I got the third and the fourth album by these guys, and they're both, they're all amazing, every every of them. But um, again, epic title, epic closing tracks on all of them, but I've only got three and four. Three, I've talked about quite a bit on this channel, but I don't think I've talked about four. I'm talking about Glory Hammer, Return to the Kingdom of Fife from 2023. Now, the closing track on this, if you're a Glory Hammer fan, has a ridiculous name, just like every other one, and it tells an epic story. The album tells an epic story, well, the whole band tells an epic story. This is album four in the epic story. It's a bit like Rhapsody like that. However, the title, the, the closing track of this album is called Maleficus, Ma Maleficus, 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 yep. Maleficus Geminus, Colossus Matrix 38B, Ultimate Invocation of the Binary Thalmatage.
That's the TV. Yeah, what a what a name. Again, an 11 minutes epic Glory Hammer closing song. Um, it's not the most epic Glory Hammer song I've ever heard, I won't lie. This album did take some time to grow on me in terms of epic Glory Hammer because when I first heard all the other stuff, I loved it on first listen. Whereas this took a little while for me to really be like, yes, this is good. And that's not just because the singer changed either. Sozo does an amazing job on the vocals. It's, there was just something slightly off about it, but it's all right. A year later, I love it as much as the others. Um, but yeah. What more do you want to say? Um, it starts with an orchestrated intro and then the thrashy riffs come in and the vocals are good. The catchy chorus is amazing. The narrations of Zygothrax and whatnot is awesome. There's a battle between it. Um, Zygothrax dies. But what got me about it so much, what actually gave me physical chills when I heard it, is the fact, if you remember back to talking about Octavarium, the whole thing that whole ends as it begins type vibe, when things reference each other like that, I get tingly all over. So you'll be... You'll be no, you won't be surprised when I tell you that the first song on this album, excluding the intro, is called Holy Flaming Hammer of Cosmic Frost. That's a great song, great chorus, great single, all good. Maleficus Genesis, whatever it's called, Geminus, <laughs> ends with the chorus of that first song. And I just wasn't ready for that when I, when I first heard it. I was just like, what in the world? And it just knocked me out. And I was like, good lord. And yeah, it's a great song. It's a great way to end the album, and I can't wait for album five. I won't lie to you. So yeah, um, Glory Hammer, Maleficus, Geminus, Colossus, Matrix, 38B, in Ultimate Invocation of the Binary Binary Thalmatage. Great song. Go listen to it. <laughs> and then the last one on this album, some folk metal, an epic closing track, also a title track, and Ensiferum's Victory Songs. This is the best Interferum album of all time. <laughs> Their newest album was good. I need more. I need to listen to it more because it's not as amazing as this type stuff, honestly. Just, I mean, when I first heard this song, I was just like, good God, again, what is this? There's folky instruments at the start. There's heavy riffs in the middle. There's a spoken section that's not in English. That's in Finnish, I'm pretty sure. That's just amazing, you know? The just the chorus, just the triumphantness of it all. Folk metal at its best, I'll tell you. Victory Songs is a fantastic song. The rest of the album is amazing. This is my top ranked um, Interferum album. Ad Victorian, the great little um, orchestral intro. Blood is the price of glory, that's great. Death bringing from the sky, that damn intro, eh? those chords. Atti, great song. One more magic potion folky and just silly fun that wanderer the ballad of the album great slower stuff raised by the sword epic stuff the new dawn mental and yeah victory songs just this 10 minute closer of just pure folk epicness it's amazing if you haven't heard victory songs by interferum the song go listen to it but if you've also got time listen to the album it's amazing honestly my favorite folk metal album of all time probably so yeah there's and that's that um victory songs from interferum Sweet as team, thank you so much for hanging out with me while I stand here and talk about 10 albums with the best closing song ever. Like I said at the start, let me know down below what albums come to mind when I say that phrase and we'll have a conversation going. Do you agree with my picks? Do you completely disagree? We'll get a conversation going and we'll be fine. If you've heard some sheep buying in the background, it's just because my boy is watching Sean the Sheep and yeah, it keeps him keeps him occupied while I do these things. So yeah, let's hope that didn't interfere too much. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, keep an eye out for the Iron Man and Ranking Part 4. Uh, that should be up tomorrow. But until that happens, everybody, stay inside, stay safe, jam some metal, and I will see you all in the next video. See you later.